Right, we've roped our tail plane and uh, we've also done a fuselage now which I haven't shown on video. But now what we're going to do, we're going to start looking at getting the top so that it's sprayed up on uh, with the Spectrum PC-10. So before we do that, we need a number of items. First of all being, we need some form of masking paper. This is just brown paper, newspapers just as good. Something to stick down the brown paper or newspaper with, which is masking tape. This can also be used uh, for masking off areas on edges where we don't want the paint to overlap. And again, I have some masking film here. This is an automotive uh, masking film that you can buy online. Um, I find this is better than the general stuff you buy in model shops. Um, usually it's called Frisk film. But this stuff here is um, a lot better and it's got a bit more tack to it. So when you're airbrushing it doesn't tend to lift off. Um, we also need our paints. Um, for this job we're going to be using Spectrum Enamel, which is PC10. And obviously thinners for mixing and thinning down our paint. We're also going to use an airbrush similar to this one here. may use this one, I may use another one yet, I'm not quite sure. Um, and obviously um, while we're doing the work we need something to stand the air is off just to lift it off the surface. I've got a couple of metal um, frames don't know where they come from but they seem to work quite well basically they sit there and then a the piece of work will sit on top like that okay right we've covered our table now with some brown paper that's just to stop uh, protect the table and the bit of old vinyl that I use when I'm spraying so I'm getting too dirty um, next thing to do is we need to start cutting out some strips of masking tape off this strip here to run along this edge down here. You can see back here I've already done one side. Um, that's the side we're going to spray and this is the side that's going to remain the same. On the edge you can see, if I can get it in the light properly for you, we just want our tape just to come around there just to stop any overspray coming on to the underside of this and this should give us a nice crisp edge as well. Okay. Right, so the way we do that is basically we cut a strip off of our masking tape and then peel it off and then working along, we place this in place, it's a little bit fiddly, we get there in the end and then we just want to run this all the way down so we know we've got a nice crisp straight edge. When we come to this corner this film is very forgiving and it will allow you to work round the curve. Like so. And then we can run this all the way down to the other end. Like so. Giving us our, our edge. Where this curve is here, we want to crimp these in, fold it down. This isn't quite correct yet, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do that and then come back to you. Right, I've done that now, so it's all masked up. You can see, cut out edges, either end, all the way around. Right, so now we've got that done, we want to protect this area here. So, what I need to do is, with some brown paper, cut out a shape, which has already been done here, like so. And then that sits over the top of there. And then with some masking tape, we just want to catch part of the mask and part of the brown paper and then gradually work our way round sealing down to 
sure in the open. Nice and firmly stuck so no paint can get into the undersurface when we're spraying. Just tidy up these bits there. And push that down. And likewise down this end. Round. Double checking there's no air is left in. And there we have our panel ready for spraying. It is worth just checking before you spray that all the edges are staying down. There's no little bubbles appeared. And that then sits on top of my two little. Like so, that means I can lift up and turn around if I need to when I'm spraying. So, we now need to move on to mixing the paint. As I say, I'm using a um, flare product, which this is the thinners, and this is the um, PC10 flare paint. Now, this I'm going to mix up at about 70 to 30, so that'll be 70 parts PC10, 30 parts thinners. Okay, um, this is the airbrush that I'm probably going to use. I will make enough paint to do um, the number of coats that I need on this piece, and then we'll mix up some more when need to to do our uh, stabilizers when we get to that stage. So I'm going to go off and mix that up now and then come back to you and then we start spraying. Okay, so we mixed up the paint, now it's not ready to, for time to apply it. Now, I've got this little airbrush and it's just running along, nice even coats. Don't go too thick because we don't want any runs, but it's just going to take a few goes, but I'll start and give you a general idea of how it should be going. The noise that you hear in the background with the compressor, so sorry if it's a, a little bit off putting. Here we go. <laughs>
So that's the start of it, as you can see, we've got some colour on there. I'm just going to let that have a dry now, because uh, if we build it up too quickly it will go all soggy and horrible. So I'm just going to let that go for now, and then come back and I'll show you once I've done a little bit more. Right, as you can see, we've done quite a few coats now, probably about six, seven coats now. Very light coats, and it's not quite dried, but this gives you some idea of the final result. Very good. And you can see, we still haven't taken the masking off, but I'll do that once it's a bit drier, and I'll show you our edge, and hopefully it's nice and crisp. Okay, there we go. What I will do is after this, I will get a very light Scotch Bright pad and just give this a rough going over because you do pick a little bit of overspray up when you're using an airbrush um, with this, so I'll just go a little bit of Scotch Bright, gently go over it, but it needs to be feel it fully cured before we do that. Um, so that's part one of the tail plane done. Um, just got the stabilizers in contrast. That's what we had. And this is what we've got. Okay, Thank right, you. so I've actually removed the mask intake now so you can actually see hopefully. That's what we're left with. Sorry, it's not clearer. And the underside is nice and clean. Okay. So just, this just needs to be left to dry for about 12, 24 hours now really. This takes a long time to dry out properly. Um, so this will be put up now to dry. And then as I say, we'll do a bit of scotch briding on there very lightly, just to remove any dust, overspray dust that may have been on there. Okay, so I'm gonna move on to the elevators now, which will be carried out exactly the same way. Right, so we're back to the um, elevators now. Um, as you can see, I've masked them all off as before, and again, it's just a matter of spraying, which I'll have another go. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work from here all the way through to there, backwards and forwards, and build up like that. So, here goes. So just let that go off for a second. What you can do, which I've done on smaller pieces, you can't do on big pieces on smaller pieces, you can go over it lightly with a hairdryer just to get it to tap off. won't mind. Um, and here we go again. start my stroke here before I get on to the um, elevator because as you start this off it tends to spit a little bit so 
if you start beforehand, that finishes and just drag across like that, stop again, start and stop, and then before you come back the other way, start. <laughs> Okay, we'll let that dry. Give it a bit of help with the hair dryer. Let's dry it off again and then just start again. Turn it around so I can get this leading edge. nearly there now. I'll just finish this now and then I'll show you the final result. Okay, this is the elevator finally finished. Okay, I'll just turn her over so you can see. The edges have not come out too bad at all. You can't actually see on the camera, but if I bring this over you'll see there's a little bit of overspray in that top right hand corner you see now that will is unfortunate but I will actually sand that out with a little bit of scotch bright scotch bright should get rid of that but apart from that it's all pretty good elsewhere so I'm very happy with that okay so that now has got to sit up and dry for at least 12 hours and then we're scotch bright it just to take any overspray off like we will do on the stabilizer itself. Okay, thanks for watching. Sorry it's been a bit uh, fragmented.